Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, October the 24th. 2024. In this update, I am still watching the Caribbean really closely for the potential for a tropical depression, storm, or hurricane to develop by early November, especially beyond November 1st, the 2nd, and the 3rd. Things could get pretty wild. So, taking a look at the latest GOES-16 RGB satellite imagery provided by CyclonicWX.com, there is a link in the description below this video. And as we could see here across the entire Caribbean basin, there is just some showers, some clouds, and some thunderstorms, but nothing too significant for the time being. But as we go into the middle to the end of next week, though, there is the potential that something here could develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm by at least the 1st or the 2nd of November. We will be looking at all of the global computer models, the ensembles, in the spaghetti plots in this video because yeah there is some indication here that something could develop but in the meantime i thought it would be pretty cool to show you all hurricane christy that is in the eastern pacific basin right now with winds up to 160 miles an hour this makes hurricane christy a category 5 on the sanford simpton scale as of the per NHC outlook here, showing us some very deep convection here on the meso floater satellite imagery from the GOES-18 satellite, showing us some pretty clear skies in the middle, surrounded by some very deep, intense convection and some lightning activity. But now, talking about the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico right now, there is no tropical activity expected in the next seven days, but I wanna be clear, something looks to be developing later on in the period down here in the Caribbean. So despite seeing this, don't be fooled, folks. Do not be fooled because, yes, we are about seven days away, which runs through Wednesday. That is the 30th of October, and we're not expecting development until the 31st or even the 1st of November. So we have about another two or three more outlooks to go of seeing this, but I'm sure by tomorrow sometime, there will be an assurance here of an area to watch from the NHC. So now the question really remains, what is the GFS model showing as far as this Central American gyre mischief going to be developing out there in the Central Caribbean by the middle to the early part of next week? So this look at the GFS for Monday morning, October the 28th. And as we could see here, not much is going on other than we do have some rainfall, some thunderstorms, some gusty winds. The darker the greens, the heavier the rain is going to be. Everyone should know that by now, right? But what's gonna end up happening is this big old fat ridge, this high pressure ridge, is going to be in place over the Western Atlantic, over Bermuda, known as our Bermuda Ridge of High Pressure. This is going to help pile all the moisture down here, all this uplift, all this convection, all of this convergence going on at the surface, gonna help lower our pressures. But exactly where a low pressure center tries to develop is gonna be very important here, okay? We can get one or two systems out of this activity. But then as we turn the calendar into, say, around Halloween time frame, this is for Thursday morning, October the 31st, the last day of October. And look at what we got. Maybe a tropical depression or a tropical storm that develops very close or on top of Jamaica. Serious rainfall, flooding, gusty winds are certainly a possibility with this. This is seven days away, folks. Again, I want to make it clear, seven days away, a lot can change between now and then. Where does this form? When does it form is going to be a very big question. Okay, so this is at 994 millibars. If we look at previous model runs, how consistent and what's the fidelity on the GFS? Well, if we go back at previous runs, this is one model run ago, this is two model runs ago, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21-ish, 22-ish, 
23. So it's been on the last 20 model runs or so. It's been showing like a broad area of low pressure or something that actually consolidates. And most recently, models are a little bit more consistently showing that somewhere in this area, we're gonna be seeing something that forms. Now, as we roll into early November, I wanna use extreme caution here for any of you that watch this video, that are watching this video, that anything beyond seven days becomes highly uncertain and anything beyond 10 days out is fantasy land. Say it with me, folks, fantasy land on the GFS. That means the GFS may show a 920 millibar, then it may not show anything at all. It's very uncertain. So as we go forward, you'll see that here out to this is going to be, this is day seven, day eight. This is day nine. You can see by nine days, we have a hurricane that forms to the north of Jamaica approaching Cuba. And then by day 10, this is day 10 right here. This is at 966 millibars. And then I don't go very far out beyond 10 days, but in this case, we will go an extra 24 hours out. So by say day 11, by November the 4th, the day before election day, we have a 953 millibar system here. This would be a formidable hurricane approaching Western Cuba also nearing the southern tip of Florida there. Not really approaching Florida, but getting close. But that's the furthest I will go out in this model. If you guys want to look beyond 10 days out, that is your risk in doing so. Now, what does the Canadian model show over the next seven days? Virtually nothing. It hasn't been showing anything hardly at all. In fact, nothing. Literally just trade winds blowing through here at a smooth angle. This ridge is a little weaker. We have not one area to watch on the Canadian model at all, which is pretty, which is pretty obnoxious if you think about it, because the GFS has been showing something, whereas the Canadian and the Euro have not indicated anything, including our icon model that also does not indicate that anything will form up. Now, if we do take a look at our Canadian model really quickly, or our icon, excuse me there, on our 12Z output, you can see nothing really forms up at all in the Caribbean. This is impressive by early November or by very late October, which is Halloween, early November, turning the calendar, something is not showing up here on the icon. So there is very little confidence right now, despite that the GFS has been showing something pretty significant. Now on the European model, Looking at the next five days here, this is for Tuesday, October the 29th, also showing nothing big at all forming up. However, it is showing a lot of this deep convection, thunderstorms, some flooding concerns, lower pressures, but it's not showing any convergence at all. We're not seeing any low pressure system that forms here or over here or even over here. Um, be just because, again, the background environment on the Euro is not as aggressive as what the GF is showing. And also this ridge is a little weaker. So there's not as much vorticity down here that can spin up something. So now when it comes to our GEFS ensemble forecast, these are our uh, perturbated members, our central minimum mean sea level pressure forecast on different members showing us some different things. So you're going to have a lot of areas of low pressure on the map. This is an ensemble. This is not a deterministic forecast. So don't let this freak you out and fool you. All right, because you're going to see different um, low pressure systems. So this is in about seven-ish days, just beyond the seven-day mark. And as we can see, there is a major hurricane over Jamaica here on one of the members. This is a 960 millibar system, perhaps. Um, over Jamaica, we have another low here. We have another low here. We have a couple of other lows here. We have another one here, here, and here. You get the idea. So there is a lot of low pressure systems forming up on our GEFS ensemble forecast. But where does this go is the question and how strong does this get? The GEFS ensemble is going very ballistic with this, showing multiple major hurricane members. So we have a one here, 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 and here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six members showing a major hurricane category three or greater on this. So this is giving us an idea that the background environment here is favorable for something that could be a little significant, such as a tropical depression storm or hurricane 
forming up later on into October, early November, more like November 2nd and the 3rd and the 4th is what we expect. And then some of these members get it even, even stronger, maybe down to as low as 934 millibars right there. There's a 934, here's another 934, 936 millibar system. So there is three members in particular that show even a strong cap four hurricane. But again, um, these are different members showing different scenarios. In fact, some members are showing it going over here, over here, even over here. And even one member wants us to go into the Eastern Pacific and even into the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a cone of uncertainty that looks kind of like this very uncertain this far out in time. This is 10 days out, by the way. So now looking at our spaghetti plot here on the GEFS model ensemble, you can see this is seven days out. I'm not going much further than that because again, why look out beyond seven days? Because I'll tell you right now, on the GEFS ensemble, there's a lot of pink tracks. So we're there. most of them are showing major hurricane intensity over here where I circled in. And because of how aggressive that ensemble forecast is, we're not going to go out that far. And we're sticking to the 10 day forecast, all right, or six or seven day forecast. That's 168 hours out. We can see most of the members here showing a tropical depression or storm in about seven days. The European ensemble is not showing hardly anything at all. Only a few members here, or only one member, showing a tropical storm. And that is why the NHC has nothing out for this area just yet. But I can guarantee you all, given another day or two, I think we'll have an area of interest on the NHC outlook. Here's another way to visualize this. This is the GEFS version 12 ensemble spaghetti plot. And you can see all these red colors are hurricane tracks. There is some major hurricane tracks moving into the uh, northwestern portion of the Caribbean. So again, we do have to watch this pretty closely as we go into early November. We're not done in the tropics just yet. Now the reason why the GFS may be onto something more significant is when we look at our coral reef watch sea surface temperature forecast here or this is the actual analysis as of yesterday this is delayed by about 24 hours right and all of this red here on your screen in indicates sea surface temperatures that are around 30 celsius so about 86 87 degrees fahrenheit that is extremely warm, more than enough to support very intense late season development, backloaded season. We got to understand this backloaded season is still among us. And we're seeing a lot of the warm waters, even over here in the Gulf of Mexico, extremely warm, but not as warm as it was earlier, but still around 80 degrees, 81 to 83. 4 degrees Fahrenheit, so warm enough to support intense hurricanes even in that basin still. Now looking at our sea surface temperature anomalies, you can see they are definitely above average here, anywhere between about a degree and a half to almost 2 degrees Celsius. And again, where our system forms up over here, water temperatures are about 2 degrees Celsius above the long-term average, and this is going to go this way and maybe over here, and if it goes into the Gulf, while water temperatures are slightly below average, they are warm enough to support hurricane development still, especially if we get a system, or if the system goes straight this way and goes out to sea, it's going to be moving over some very warm water temperatures also with well above average sea surface temperatures. Now, looking at our upper ocean heat content really quickly, extreme, exceptional, high upper ocean heat content values. Some of these white colors here indicate upper ocean heat content is 200 units still. That is extreme. That is unforeseeable for late October, mid-ish, late October-ish standards. And the upper ocean heat content should not be this high at all, but it is very high. And so we cannot take our focus off the system. And when we take a look at our upper ocean heat content anomaly, you can see anything in red here, even over the Gulf, even over the Southwest Atlantic, extremely high and well above average for this time of the year of late October. Now, if you found this tropical weather update very detailed, helpful, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get latest tropical weather outlook and discussions on an everyday basis, especially we're keeping an eye on the Caribbean right now. I will be on top of this every single day 
leading up through Halloween and probably even beyond Halloween until my vacation, which is coming up on the 15th of November, because we cannot ignore this at all, folks. Um, so if you want to stay up to date, please subscribe, share this light, a video with your family and friends, leave a comment, and also be sure you also check out my social medias. Links in the description below this video. But anyways, I will see you back here tomorrow with another tropical weather outlook and discussion.